Today I'm going to share a verse with you which might seem a little bit of a challenge, but I'm going to give you a bit of context first because it's part of Hannah's prayer. Now, you'll remember Hannah. You know that she was desperate to have a child. Her husband's other wife, she was having children, but Hannah, bless her, was remaining barren. And one day she's there in the presence of God and she's weeping before the Lord. And you may remember that the priest comes up and asks her, are you drunk? But actually she's praying, she's calling out to the Lord, longing that she might have a child. And in the midst of this prayer, she says these words that are really quite provoking. It's in verses 6 and 7 of 1 Samuel chapter 2. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. And when you're reading these things, you are given a picture of the sovereignty of God, which not everyone feels comfortable with. You see, we love to say God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And that is absolutely true. But the goodness of God is not always expressed in the same ways as we would express goodness or we would want to have goodness expressed towards us. God has got a much, much bigger plan. Where would we be if he hadn't allowed his son to die on the cross and be raised again to give us life? Where would some of the things be in our own lives if God had not humbled us to the point where we could receive his grace? We'd have just gone on in our own self-centered ways, not realizing. And here's Hannah, and out of the depths of her need, what she's saying is, I feel desperate. I feel as if I've gone down to nothing. I feel as if I'm in the ash heap. I feel as if it's just poverty that's come my way and not wealth. It's, it's disappointment, it's death, it's the grave. All the negatives seem to be hers. And yet somehow in that brokenness, she is in a position where God can move and lift her up. It's almost as if she's saying, I think God has brought me to this point so that he can do something incredible in my life. And we know that what he does in her life is incredible because he does answer the prayer. He does give her her son. And her son is, is no ordinary son. Her son is Samuel. Samuel, the one who, who changed the destiny of the nation under God. He, he's the one who, who saw the, the kingdom brought in. And he saw not just Saul put in place, it was a disappointment, but he saw David put in place and he, he recognized David. And all of this, in a sense, comes out of this prayer because of this woman in her brokenness and in her disappointment, in her despair, is prepared to call out to God and acknowledge that God in his sovereignty is the one who can both humble and elevate, the one who can bring low and yet lift up on high. And she's putting herself into his hands with that kind of trust. You see, God is good all the time, but not necessarily in the ways that would tick all of our boxes. So I find this a challenging prayer, but I find it a very, very important prayer. And one of the things I've learned as I've gone on in my Christian journey is that there's a huge security in coming to rest into the sovereignty of God, to know that actually he does know all that's going on. And even though the devil might be the prince of this age and think that he rules in this world and claims all kinds of things, I know this, that however much the devil might think he rules, God overrules and God is the one who reigns and has the ultimate say. So let's trust the Lord today with whatever circumstances we're in. You may be feeling humbled, you may be feeling lifted up. I know someone who said, every day I have a mountaintop experience. Sometimes I'm on top of the mountain, sometimes the mountain's on top of me. But just know this, wherever you are on that trajectory, God knows you and God is sovereign. And if you pray from the depths of your heart, God can actually take you where he wants you to be because he's working in your life to bring you to that place where he can do what he wants to in you and through you to the praise of his glory.